Morning. Morning. Oi, sir. What are you doing? Uh, trudging. You know, trudging? To trudge? To trudge the slow, weary, depressing, yet determined walk of a man who has nothing left in his life except the impulse to simply soldier on. Oh, were you robbed? <laughs> uh, interesting question, actually. Yes, and then at the same time, a huge, resounding no. It's more a sort of involuntary vow of poverty. <laughs> really? Jeffrey Chaucer is a male in his late 20s or early 30s who seems to be in good health. The trio of men in the previous scene meet Chaucer on their way to their first jousting tournament. Chaucer joins the three men on their journey. They soon find out about a problem that he has. Chaucer is very preoccupied with gambling. He has unsuccessful efforts to control, cut back, and stop the problem. He often is caught watching others gamble. This causes Chaucer to end up the same way he was found in the previous scene, stripped of his clothes and in debt. The abnormal traits Chaucer displays characterize an illness known as pathological gambling. I can't believe it. You did it, Chaucer. I have to thank you. I didn't think we had a chance. Mm. My pleasure, William. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll stick around and see how things turn out. Act as my herald and you'll receive a share of the winnings. Done. If you don't mind, I gotta go and see a man about a dog. Pathological gambling is a disorder in which a person does not consider the harmful and negative consequences of their actions. They seem to show no desire to stop. It is associated with social cost and family relationships, and it tends to be a progressive illness. This disorder is considered an impulse control disorder as opposed to an addiction. According to the DSM-4-TR, an individual must meet five of the following ten criteria to be diagnosed with this disorder. Preoccupation, tolerance, withdrawal, escape, chasing, lying, loss of control, illegal acts, risk significant relationships, and bailout. Chaucer meets eight of the ten criteria. In the following scene, William finds out about Chaucer's gambling problem and his great amount of debt. as well. Ulrich von Lichtenstein? Yes. I'm Simon the Summoner. And I'm overdue at the Sword Arena. I must detain you on behalf of your herald. You were never robbed, were you? Look, I have a gambling problem. I can't help myself. And these people, they'll <laughs> quite literally take the clothes off your back. With pathological gambling disorder shows a number of signs that can be easy to detect. However, people with this illness often lie about the extent of their gambling. They may also be irritable when trying to stop gambling, lie about the extent of their gambling, participate in illegal activities, and need to gamble with larger amounts of money to be excited. But you, his liege, would pay us. And who are you? Peter, a humble partner and purveyor of religious relics. How much does he owe you? Ten gold florins. You lanky kids! Pain! Pain! Hey, hey, hey! What? Let him go! Ow! What would you do to him if I was to refuse? We, on behalf of the Lord God, will take it from his flesh so that he may understand that gambling is a sin. Oh, come on. Please, Will. Please, will you help me, Sir Ulrich? I promise you won't regret it. 
I don't have the money. Release him. For God's sake, give him back his clothes. And you'll get it. Done. In the previous clip, Chaucer is caught lying about his problem. In the following clip, we see problems and illegal acts as Chaucer signs the scroll in order for William to be eligible to compete in his jousting tournaments. May I present my Lord Ulrich, whose mother's father was Schillard von Reckberg, son of the Duke Gelf of Saxony, son of Ghibelline, son of Vendish, the fourth Earl of Brunswick, the same Vendish who inherited the fife of Lundberg That'll from... do, Harold. Six generations is more than enough. Show me the patents. Indicate in which events shall your Lord Ulrich compete. You'll first meet Roger, Lord Mortimer. Thank you very much. Chaucer creates a patent of nobility and brings it to the three lords to get William into the jousting championship. He succeeds at forging the nobility and William goes to fight. My lords! My ladies! And everybody else here not sitting on a cushion! Today, today, you find yourselves equals. <laughs> For you are all equally blessed. For I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure of introducing to you a knight sired by knights, a knight who can trace his lineage back beyond Charlemagne. I first met him atop a mountain near Jerusalem, praying to God, asking his forgiveness for the Saracen blood spilt by his sword. Next, he amazed me still further in Italy when he saved a fatherless beauty from the would-be ravishings of her dreadful Turkish uncle. Oh. Oh. In Greece, he spent a year in silence just to better understand the sound of a whisper. And so, without further gilding the lily, and with no more ado, I give to you the seeker of serenity, the protector of Italian virginity, the enforcer of our Lord God, the one, the only, Sir Ulrich von Lichtenstein! <laughs> Aversion therapy would be the most effective treatment for this illness. This is a type of therapy designed to make an individual give up an undesirable habit by causing them to associate it with an unpleasant effect. However, this type of therapy is not used very often anymore. Other successful behavioral techniques include imaginal desensitization, which is a relaxation based and guided imagery technique based on the premise that systematic desensitization allows individuals to control their impulses, imaginal relaxation, behavioral monitoring, and covert sensations. And one, and two, and three, and four. And your hands shoot the light like a birdie on a branch. And one, two, and three, and four. And what doesn't lead, he follows like a girl. <laughs> 